We need your help to prove whether the Earth is flat or round. In my last video, we looked at how ancient scientists were able to measure the size of the globe by just using sticks and shadows. We then compare that to what those shadows should look like in the flat Earth model. You can't measure the shape of the Earth with nonsense sticks and shadows. I think I can. In this video, I'm going to show you my best attempt to build a cheap contraption that makes it easy for anyone on Earth to measure their latitude using nonsense sticks and shadows. Anyone? Yes. And by the end of this video, I'll show you how you can help me measure the shape of the Earth where you live using my new contraption. But enough talk, more data! It's data time! I'm data. So the whole point of this tool is to be able to easily measure the angle of the sun without having to do a lot of math or trigonometry. Ugh, I hate doing math. Exactly. To this end, I have printed out all of the angles for a given height of a gnomon, or pole. The lines on the paper are concentric circles that list the angle of the sun all the way out to about 70 degrees. Why stop there? Well, as the angle of the sun gets lower, the length of the shadow gets exponentially larger, and this device would have to become way too big in order to record the shadow. So, 70 degrees was about as far as I could reasonably go while keeping the size of the device small, but still big enough to record accurate measurements. Is that long enough? Well, if you use it on the equinox, this length will work for everyone south of 70 degrees north latitude. So it won't work in northern Greenland, but it'll work just about everywhere else in the world where people live. Sorry, Greenland. Now we have to handle one of the most sensitive parts of this device, which is the angle of the pole and platform. Why are those so sensitive? In order to get an accurate reading of the angle of the shadow, this device has to be perfectly level on the ground, and the pole has to be perfectly vertical. If the pole isn't standing straight up, the shadows won't fall on the correct point on the paper. Similarly, if the paper isn't horizontal, the angle will also be wrong. Remember, we're trying to decide whether the Earth is flat or round based on the difference between the two models. And in many cases, it's only going to be different by a few degrees, especially if you're close to the equator. The more accurate we can make this contraption, the better. So how are you going to make sure everything is leveled properly? That's the next step. I need to actually build a platform to support the paper and vertical pole so that everything is angled correctly. For that, I need to leave the computer, and for the first time on this channel, I am going to build something in the real world. It's build time! So in order to keep this cheap and easy to assemble, I'm going to use half-inch PVC pipe. Initially, let's just build a very simple pole using 90-degree connectors. In order to ensure the vertical pole is truly vertical, I'm going to build a plumb bob to hang straight down the pipe. What's a plumb bob? That's just an old technique of using a hanging weight to show exactly which direction is down and therefore vertical. For my weight, I'm going to use a screw eye. I hang the string and weight down the pipe and look to see if it's touching the inner walls and it's way too dark to see anything. Okay, let's drill some holes in the pipe in order to let some light in. Now I can actually see the screw eye in the pipe and it's really wide. The screw barely fits down the pipe. Okay, let's replace the screw eye with something that's a bit thinner, like a sewing needle. That fits a lot better down the pipe, but it's hanging along the edge of the pipe. We want it to hang down the center. So let's cross two strings at the top to suspend the weight. I glue one string across the top and cut it. And then I do the same in the other direction. This gives us a platform to hang the plumb bob. I clean it all up and tape it down, and now I hang the plumb bob down the center of the pipe. If it touches one side of the pipe, it means the pipe isn't exactly vertical, and I need to readjust it. If I simulate the sun with my flashlight, I can get a feel for how much the shadow changes with just a bit of wiggle in the vertical pipe. I can also see that my pole is way too tall if I want the shadow to fit on my platform. Let me put an indicator lower down the pole to indicate where I think I want the top to be. I lay down a piece of cardboard to mark where I think the shadow should be. Using info from sencalc.org and some trigonometry, I mark the angles that I expect to see at my location this time of year, somewhere between 32 and 33 degrees elevation. The shadow of my cardboard indicator should appear in between these two marks. I test this out with my light to ensure its visibility. Now I go outside one sunny morning to test how much of an effect the wiggle room has on my reading. Initially, the shadow indicator looks roughly accurate, but if the platform isn't completely horizontal, the shadow can move off its mark. It looks like it could be off by about half a degree here. The vertical pole also has some play in it. 
it looks like it can cause a similar amount of error in the reading. I'm gonna go back at high noon and try to get a better reading. Well, it looks like in less than an hour, our sunny morning turned into a cloudy noon. I got my time-lapse recording all set up to record the shadow at noon, and this is literally all I got. Seven minutes of overcast shadow, and the sun didn't come out for the rest of the day. So much for sunny Southern California. But it just goes to show you that an important part of a sundial is, you know, the sun. So now I order several more parts to try and actually build out the platform. I need it to be long, but not very wide. So I build this long rectangular frame to support my platform. I also want screw levelers like you use for furniture in order to ensure that the platform is perfectly horizontal. But it looks like I got the wrong ones. These aren't adjustable. Oh well, let's put them on for now until I can order the right ones. I also realized with my shadow indicator that I really need the top of my vertical pole to come to a point, which is not what I have with the PVC pipe. I have these foam backer rods from a previous project years ago which I had already melted to a point. So I got an end cap for the pipe and drilled a hole for the backer rod. This also allows me to adjust the height of the pole a bit since I can push the foam rod through the end cap farther if I need to. Okay, now I'm ready to take my printed pages and place them on the cardboard platform. I print them on A4 paper, so I have to join them by placing the edges together. Then I cut a hole for the vertical pole and place the sheets end to end. However, it looks like some angles get lost in the edges. I think I'm gonna have to reprint them with an overlap built into them. Let's just tape them together and see how this looks. I put the pointed cap on the top of the pole and test it out with the light. The new pointed cap looks good, except when the light moves up, we lose it to the pipe's shadow. Let's see if I can fix that by making the vertical pipe shorter and making the backer rod top longer. Okay, now the shadow looks better, but we still lose it when the light is overhead. Now I ordered the screw levelers, but had to order the T-nuts separately. However, it looks like the T-nuts don't fit the screws, even though they both claim to be one quarter inch. Also, these T-nuts don't seem to easily go into PVC pipes. My leveling efforts are just not working. They're cursed! Let's move on to the platform. I bought some actual plywood and fiberboard to make the platform light but sturdy but the frame is too wide for them, so let me cut them down to a more manageable size. Now I can lay the boards down end to end and put the printed pages on top of them. I reprinted these pages to have a bit of an overlap between them, so they remain more continuous. All right, it's starting to look a bit more manageable. Let's test it outside. Okay, finally it's sunny and I can test this with real sun. And it looks like the wiggle that I was worried about isn't too big of an issue. I mean, it is changing the degrees, but it's not as bad. It's still like within less than a degree at this latitude. So maybe it's not as big of a concern. Here is a time-lapse video of the shadow moving at midday. You need to record the value of the shadow at high noon, which you can do with an app like SunCalc. Or you can just record it throughout the middle of the day. And whenever the shadow is the shortest, that's when we are at high noon or solar noon, when the sun is at its highest peak in the sky. Here we can see another issue with recording our shadow. The pointed tip helps us record an exact value, but even a pointed tip is blurry on the page. Can't you just sharpen the end of the foam rod? No, it's not due to its point. It's due to the sun's angular size. What? Up till now, we've been assuming the sun is a point light source, but the sun has a diameter, and so light is actually shining from multiple locations across its surface. This means that the shadows cast from the sunlight aren't sharp, they are a little bit blurry. Based on the sun's diameter and distance from the Earth, its angular size in the sky is about one half of a degree. This means that shadows cast from the sun will also have a blurriness of half a degree, which is why our readings can never really be more accurate than half a degree. If we take a photograph of the shadow's blurriness, then there are some ways to use software to take the average of the blur. But actually, I think with all the other factors affecting your accuracy, half a degree is pretty good for our purposes. I think that if this device is accurate to within one degree, I'll be happy. Remember that the flat and globe Earth models will have a larger divergence at latitudes farther from the equator. So if we take measurements closer to the north or south poles, we should be fine with a one degree accuracy. Okay, now I just want to build some better cross supports and see if I can get the platform to sit horizontally better. Then I glue the paper in place on the boards of the platform. And finally, I bought my third set of screw levelers and I'm going to give it one last try before giving up on them. I drill bigger holes for them 
and glue them into position. Once the glue dries, I see if they will work this time. Finally, I think we have some levelers that actually work. Success! And here it is, my first sundial, or whatever it's called. Comment below if you have a better name for this thing. This is definitely not gonna win any awards, but it is relatively cheap and simple to make and should be fairly easy to assemble. It's just PVC pipes with some boards and paper on them. And the plumb bob. Actually, I think the plumb bob is not really that useful and just adds to the build complexity, so I'm gonna remove it. Good riddance. But that's it. I'm still not happy with it and want it to be simpler and cheaper and more robust, but this is the gist of it. It definitely works better farther from the equator, but then again, that's where the flat earth model and the globe earth model show the greatest differences. You said they could help, right? If you're interested in having one of these devices to measure the shadows of the sun, send me an email and I'll see if I can start sending out prototypes for people to test. Everyone gets one. Well, uh, I don't know how quickly I can get these out to people. I'm not a factory. I'll probably just send out a few prototypes to people in order to get feedback before making more and selling them for a small price. The cost is starting to add up. Either way, if you're interested, get in contact with me and I'll try and get them out as soon as possible. Will we get enough information to prove whether the Earth is flat or round? Who knows? Maybe we can get enough people interested that during future equinoxes and solstices, we can all go outside and record the sun's location on the same day and build an actual model of the size and shape of the Earth from the data. More data! It's data time!